What's up guys, welcome back to Airbnb ABCs. With the talk about all of the Airbnb stuff, with the talk of collapse of revenue in the entire short-term rental industry, if you're subscribed here, you are probably wondering, are the things that I'm talking about, you know, meshing up with real life? Is Are we actually making money? And I always like to give you guys the freshest, most raw content that I can that's not filled with a bunch of fluff and BS. And if you guys haven't subscribed here yet, subscribe down below and hit the like button for this video because I try to bring you guys the real deal of investing in short-term rentals on Airbnb, VRBO, and direct bookings uh, to some extent. And I don't have anything to sell you. I'm not a realtor. I really don't care if you get involved in this at all. But if you want to see the real things that are going on in the short-term rental business, uh, you know, subscribe down below so that you don't miss anything. So a couple weeks ago, I put out a video detailing my June revenue. And the June-July months, I think probably nationwide, are going to be among the higher months of any one season. And what we saw with June is that uh, across my entire portfolio, we were down, I don't remember, it was something like around 10% for our gross revenue, but our net revenue was actually up because of our year-over-year -year expenses for June were less in 2023 than they uh, were in 2022. And so today I am going to uh, give you guys the July 2023 versus 2022 numbers, as well as this is the first month where I had a completely uh, full month of data in July of 2021 that I can show you guys because 2021 was an absolutely wild ride in the short-term rental uh, uh, business, and that month was just absolutely insane. So without further ado, let's jump right into my QuickBooks numbers where I'm going to give you guys the actual raw numbers that we see from our end without any fluff or hype or any you know other type of bull stuff on it. So getting right into the raw numbers, I'm going to show you guys a lot of different ways that you can look at these numbers because there are a lot of ways that you can sort of manipulate the data in order for it to say whatever it is that you want. And so if you guys are getting a lot of stuff from any other channel or whatever, they may only be showing you one particular data point that maybe uh, sells their particular side of things. But I'm going to give you guys the full thing and I'm going to try to explain this the best I can using the way that I account for all of the money. But when we get in here and we start looking at the uh, previous year comparison of July 2023 versus July 2022, uh, we can just start looking at our top line numbers here as far as our gross profit goes. And gross profit includes every single cent that comes into the company accounts, be it cleaning fees, uh, late fees, or I guess I don't really have any late fees, but rent, everything that comes in. And a lot of folks want to separate those things, but when you are reporting your numbers to the IRS and different taxing agencies, they are going to want to know uh, your gross numbers and then what your bottom line revenue is after all your expenses are taken out. And so all of that stuff counts. In July of 2022, we did just over $15,000 worth of business between the two cabins that we have here. I have a third cabin that I talk about a lot, but we haven't had a full year of data on that. And so it's sort of worthless to even look at that, you know, right this second. Uh, in 2023, we only did 13,500 or so, leaving us with a change of about 1500 bucks, just over $1,500, and a net change of negative 10.3%. And when a lot of folks look at that negative 10.3%, they're like, wow, that's a lot of, uh, that's a big percentage. And it, it is, but in reality, it's only about 1500 bucks, so it's not the end of the world. When we come down here to our bottom line numbers, and for some reason on another video I did, this got cut off, so if you can't see it, I'm sorry. But uh, for uh, July of 2022, we had a net income of 6,836. And in 23, we had a net income of 6,336. Uh, making for a um, net income change between 2023 and 2022 of negative 7.3. And this is where folks can sort of skew the numbers one way or another because one cabin made up for a much larger percentage of this than the other one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this out into classes. That's the way I account for these things on a separate basis is I make each one a class in my QuickBooks account. And when you look at this, the cabin that we call Whispering Woods this year in 2023 only did $5,228 of uh, revenue in um, for July. And in 2022, it had $8,071.31 
for a net change of negative 35.2%. And you're probably like, wow, what is wrong with that cabin? What is the deal? And to be honest with you, it's hard for me to pin down exactly if this is 100% accurate. Because when I put in uh, money into this software, it goes on when it was deposited. So if we had a reservation that started at the end of June, like let's say June 30th, and was a week long and rolled way into July, that money will be accounted for in the June report. The same way is if we um, have one that starts uh, towards the end of the month and then rolls over into the next month, the next month may not, it, it, we may get income on this month that's not necessarily reflected in next month. But when we look at the other cabin that we call Moonlight Ridge, and, and at the end of this video, there'll be a, a playlist that has all the tours of these cabins. So if you guys wanna see what these are and what they're like, you can uh, take a look at that. But we see here that the, this cabin did 7,370 this year, and it only did 69.21 last year for a net increase of 6.5%. Now, if you uh, take that farther out, and this is why I like doing this on a year-to-date basis instead of a monthly basis, because it sort of smooths out all of those when things were deposited, and we can roll this back to the beginning of the year of 2023. <laughs> And so once I was able to access the refresh button on that, because the way my screen recorder, it has the, uh, the, the counter for it, was over my refresh button, you can see that last year, uh, year to date from January 1st to uh, July 31st, this cabin did, uh, the, the, the Whispering Woods did 41,935, so almost 42,000. And this year it has done 40,000. 808, so almost 41. So it is only down about 2.7 for the year over year. If you look at the next cabin here, the one that we call Moonlight Ridge, we had uh, 47,689 for 22 uh, year to date, and we had 43,774 this year for a net um, for a net of 8.2% of a total decline. But then if you go all the way to the end to our year-to-date totals, we have done um, 85,000, approximately 500 in 2023, and we had, we had done almost 90,000 in 2022 for a year-to-date uh, gross change of negative 4.7, but because we've had less expenses so far in 2023 than we did in 2022, we are actually up for net income by 1.7%. So when you're looking at those, you're probably looking and saying, well, you are down, so you are losing money from last year. And the simple fact is we're not losing money in any, in any way, shape, or form. We're still making quite a bit of money at the end of the month in our you know net profit line, but we are making less money overall than we did in 2020. 2022 and definitely from 2021 when things were just absolutely ridiculous with the COVID crisis. In my opinion, things are going to sort of continue to trend like this on a year over year basis until uh, a couple things happen. And one, it needs to sort of the reasons for why the revenue is going down on the top line number. The Biggest thing really, in my opinion, is the economy. People are, even though the economy is, is quote, doing well, according to you know the experts out there, the stock market is doing well, the average person, the people that are going on vacation and renting these places are just physically or financially being squeezed to death by inflation, by housing costs, by food costs, by fuel costs, medications, uh, all of the expenses of living your regular everyday life have gone up in a tremendous fashion and as of yet salaries have not caught up to it and it takes a much longer for wages and income to uh, catch up to where inflation can get in a relatively short period of time. In addition, if from the pandemic times, there are a lot more travel options. Things are basically back to normal as far as your ability to travel throughout the country and throughout the world without any of these restrictions. And so even though travel uh, overall is up, travel to each individual uh, location may not be as strong as it was during 21 and 22. But the good thing about the Smokies is it is the 
biggest. It is the uh, the most traveled short-term rental area in the United States and you know, probably the world. And so I think that there's always going to be strong demand where we have these cabins. Now, I told you guys that I would show you guys the 2021 numbers that we had specifically for Moonlight Ridge because we didn't own Whispering Woods yet at the time. And this was a catalyst for us purchasing Whispering Woods just a short, I think, 90 days later. So on the screen right now, you can see this just enormous number now uh, moonlight ridge is what we rent it as a two bedroom it's technically a one plus loft it's about a 1200 square foot cabin it does have a really cool outdoor fireplace uh, it has mountain views hot tub everything that you could potentially want in a uh, rental cabin uh, of that size but we did $11,381.56 in our very first month in the short-term rental marketplace as far as renting. And now, you know, I've been in the long-term rental space since 2013 and I've owned real estate since 2006 as far as personal residences and such. But when we got this first month in, we were like, we got to repeat this immediately. Why interest rates are low because we knew that they would be going up. We got this one on a 3.25. We got the next one at a 4.375, which you know these days is basically just unheard of. And then our net income for this particular month was nearly $10,000, mainly because we did not have a mortgage payment yet to pay because when we closed in June, you, we uh, didn't have a mortgage mortgage payment due until August. So our bottom line number is just absolutely ridiculous and you know isn't necessarily indicative of any one single given month. But that is what we had for July of 2021. Uh, you guys can go back and see what we did in uh, June. Uh, on the other video, I'll try to link it up here if I can remember to put that in. That is what we have done so far in 2023 versus 2022. And I hope that puts into perspective when people say that everything is crashing, that things are, you know, everyone's losing money, everyone's going out of business. That may be the case in some areas, in some poorly positioned short term rentals, but in your large, major vacation areas, it, there is a decrease in revenue, there's a decrease in occupancy to some uh, capacity, but for the most part, everyone is out there still making money. So guys, click on these links that are on the screen right now. They're going to tell you guys all about the cabins that we have, the, the way that we manage them from afar, and all the trials and tribulations of running an Airbnb VRBO short-term rental business. If you haven't subscribed yet, down, down below, hit the like button for me. It really helps this video out in the YouTube algorithm. I appreciate you guys watching today, and I'll see you in the next one.